Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here for this very first version of uh, APS San Francisco, especially because we are going to talk about subscription apps. Um, so I'm Jeff. Uh, I come from France. I'm the co-founder of Purchase which is a uh, no-code um, app subscription growth platform. And we help editors uh, grow their revenues using subscriptions, thanks to no-code tools. And uh, I'm very pleased to share with you what we've learned in a two years and a half running Purchase Lee. Um, and today we're going to talk about subscription funnels. Uh, funnels with the S because there are as many subscription funnels as there is different kind of apps. You can have trials, you can have uh, art paywalls, you can have uh, even the reader apps which have specific funnels where you start in the app, move on the website, and then go back to the app and subscribe in the middle. So, uh, but we're going to focus because I was told I only had 20 minutes today on what is maybe the most uh, common funnel, which is the freemium subscription funnel. Well, you'll be installing the app using, you'll see some paywall, eventually you're going to subscribe, um, using a trial, start paying, renewing, and maybe stay for a year or two or three or more. Um, the paywall, I show it to you like that, but it's a big lie, because in fact, it pretty much looks like this. Because you'll be losing people at every step of that funnel. And you'll be losing, there's some steps you'll be, well, you'll be losing a lot of people. And what we see from uh, app founders and people that create apps is that it's tough to understand if it's normal to be losing so many people at these steps. And the goal of this session today is to give you some insights that we've gathered from top performers of the market so that, you know, if you're under performers or better, if you're, if you're better than these guys, and also to give you some tricks to grow. Because all this game in the end, it's about fixing leaks, plugging leaks. And I couldn't dream of anybody better than Andy Carvel to join me on stage right now and help you on that. Please welcome Andy. Uh, thanks a lot, Jeff. And uh, yeah, hi everyone. Um, really great to be here. Thanks, first of all, to the organizers at uh, Promotion Summit for putting this event on. I'm Super excited that there's a focused event on you know, probably my favorite topic, subscription optimization. Uh, and it's great to be up here with Jeff um, you know, co-presenting on this. So um, just very briefly, hi, I'm, I'm Andy Carvel. I'm uh, <clears throat> currently working uh, building a mobile growth consultancy slash agency. We're based in Berlin, Germany, or headquartered there, but we're working pretty globally. Uh, working with a lot of the top consumer subscription apps, we're working with folks like Adobe, HBO Max, uh, Lego, and yeah, a bunch of other companies, uh, helping them to acquire, engage, retain, and uh, monetize users. So we have a kind of like services across the, the whole funnel, really, to, to help um, consumer apps that, that want to grow. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm going to be basically kind of tag teaming with Jeff, uh, showing some practical examples from some feature clients, as well as just some good examples from the industry to support some of um, Jeff's insights. Let's do this. All right. And of course, the first uh, step of this, uh, of this funnel is getting people from installed to paywall viewed. And that may seem hard that this is a challenge. And of course, 100% of people that launch the app should, should have uh, at least once uh, view a paywall. And in some cases, still it's not the case, and most, a lot of apps are just hiding, kind of hiding their subscriptions uh, and their paywalls inside the settings section or whatever. So of course, this is obvious, but you, everyone should see a paywall in your app. And it should also be displayed as soon as possible, because this is selling a contract between your users that know that at some point they have to pay, and yourself and saying, okay, here's this, how are we gonna get money? You're gonna have this for free, and you're gonna pay for this. And um, well, I say that to you from the very beginning so that we can build kind of trust uh, together and you, you'll know where uh, I want you to, to buy and what you won't be able to do. It's not a trap, you know. And fighting the trap in subscription business, uh, the fear of subscription is, uh, is something that is big and we'll talk about that later with, uh, with the trial. There are a few cases in which deferring the payroll appearance is a good idea, especially if you have an emergency usage of the app and you want to first let the people do that emergency, fulfill that emergency, and then display the paywall, which can be good because they feel like they've done their job and now they are receptive to receiving the paywall. But this is not really common. So you should expect 100% uh, people, 100% of your users that launch the app that actually see the paywall. Especially because it's kind of a day zero or never situation because we see up to uh, apps with up to 80% uh, of their subscribers that comes from day zero, from first day, first launch, or first sessions. Um, this is really important in that situation to be working on that first day experience. 
you should display a lot of paywall, and you should use the, um, the data that you gather from the onboarding to make your paywalls more specific so that you speak to your customers, to their needs, and they feel that you, uh, you got them, you know? Um, and so make it pop as soon as possible, because most uh, trials that are taken are taken within the first five minutes of the sessions uh, inside the application. And then you should be really concise and eye-catchy on these paywalls, especially on the first paywalls, because 68% of the users will be closing the paywall within the first 10 seconds. And you want them to keep something, some stuff in mind uh, in, that, uh, in that time frame of 10 seconds. So be concise and be eye-catching. But it's not, well, it doesn't end on first day, of course. And the good thing is that after that, you have the opportunity to work on the long tail and change that 80% balance if you're in that situation. A few things to know about that is that, well, uh, only 13% of people that launch an app uh, have a paywall on a daily, uh, on a daily uh, average user see a paywall. It's too low. Raise that number if you're in that situation. You can also focus on working on all the people that started purchasing. Tap the purchase, they see the Apple or Google uh, sheet, and then they cancel. These are abandoned cards that you should be working on, exactly as e-commerce. And the last thing is that if you see that there's a lot of people that are doing your, using their, your app a lot every day, and they're never going to pay, maybe it's time to change the free versus paid uh, balance of your subscription. And I think, Andy, you have a few things to tell to us about this. Yeah, so I'm going to be kind of jumping in with a few kind of tactical examples um, you know, to support some of Jeff's insights, as I mentioned. Um, so one of these, which, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a trick, but if you're going to try to trick your users, then trick them with artificial scarcity, because it always works. Um, yeah, basically, there's a very kind of deeply in, ingrained kind of human instinct to gather scarce resources, right? And, and ideally protect them, you know, for, for yourself and for your, your immediate clan or family. Um, you know, these are just basic evolutionary drives that we've been built with. And unfortunately, they're, they're very easy to, to kind of uh, tap into with, um, with behavioral psychology and time-limited special offers, this idea that, like, there's something scarce and you have a limited time to get it. Even, you know, in, in a consumer subscription sense, that's, that's not really accurate. You know, there's almost an unlimited amount of subscriptions that you could sell. Um, but it does work very effectively to, uh, to put some urgency into the situation. Um, tra travel booking folks like this, you know, know this very well. If you go onto a travel booking site, um, you'll, you'll get lots of countdowns and, and urgent, um, yeah, ur ur like they're urging you to, uh, you know, to make your purchase quickly or you'll miss out. And it's that fear of missing out which uh, can work very effectively as a, as a conversion tactic also for, for selling subscriptions. Then, the, deal, the big deal will be, will be to convert people to start a trial. And this is where you'll be losing, if you remember the first, one of the first slides, most of the people. Because, well, you could be happy with the 15% uh, people trying a, starting a trial on your app. Um, still, this is a must-have. This is the reason why we chose uh, this funnel and not uh, another one, because an Apple uh, released a lot of very interesting figures that I would encourage you to see. Maybe you can note the, this, this, uh, this, well, this talk they have on their website. 60% of paying subscribers on the App Store started from a trial. So it's, it's the biggest thing to attract people is to start a trial. Um, the biggest thing is, is maybe to fight for the fear of subscription. Once again, it's important that you build trust very early with your customers, especially letting them know how how long they will be subscribing, how long the trial uh, will, uh, well, the duration of that trial, maybe remind them before you charge them, and make that deal very clear from the beginning so that they don't, and you fight that subscription fear from the beginning. There are a few cases in which offering a trial is not a good idea. Uh, and uh, I think from the slide, uh, you, you saw some of them in the, in the previous presentation. Dating apps, they don't use free trials because you get the values directly after subscription. This, the value doesn't really last in time. It takes a lot of time so that you can have all these profiles that are hidden again. And so in that case, they don't offer trial, but it's a good idea for most apps to offer a trial, a sneak peek, and, and also adapt the duration of the trial to what you want the user to be doing. And I think, Andy, you got a few examples on this too? Yeah, uh, here's an example from Visco. Visco is uh, a platform for creators of like visual, um, Visual like images and, and video, basically. Uh, it's used a lot by, by video and, and, and videographers and photographers to create like nice video assets. And um, what they noticed was actually that a lot of the free users were screenshotting various, um, you know, various bits of, of the application. They were trying to get the assets, you know, out of the app like through through screenshots. And like uh, I think it's a really great insight that they use from looking at the user behavior 
to tap into this. So when a user now screenshots on, on Visco, it actually gives them a reminder, hey, by the way, if you were actually using the premium version of this, you wouldn't need to screenshot these and have like really shitty low res images. You could have the full high res images. So um, you know, it's a really great example of like turning some behavioral insight into um, you know, a conversion trigger, um, which actually worked very effectively for Visco, as you can see there, kind of um, between 15 to 20% uplift in, uh, in trial activation. Yeah, very nice uplift. And so, well, next we'll be moving people and making them finally pay. And we've lost a lot of people along the way because only 60% uh, will move from trial to paid if you're good enough. And maybe more for some cases, but this is what we see from best performers. And converting people from trial to paying customers uh, is tough, especially because a lot of people will directly after taking the trial uh, cancel the renewal. So two things that are required here is first of all, developing habits. You want your people to be using your app and get used to your subscriptions. You know, you want them to, you want that to become in their daily routine so that they stay sticky with your subscription. And so you should, well, define the length of your trial accordingly so that they get to do that and they get to, use to, to be used to, their, uh, to your subscription. Next thing is that you, he, you need to give them a visibility on what's the long-term value, what they will get if they subscribe for six months or one year. They need to be sure that this value is gonna be consistent over time. Um, and there are a lot of cases in which people don't even consume or use uh, content or services that you, you, that you offer in the subscription. And in that case, don't hesitate to offer them a second chance because, well, maybe they didn't have time or they subscribed, but, well, they were busy doing something else and they forgot. And I think that, Andy, you have great example of how you can make people go through uh, and use this subscription. Yeah, so I think it's really important once somebody starts a subscription to get them into what I would call like a trial onboarding or trial activation. It's essentially like a second or an extended version of the initial onboarding where you're bringing them into the app and give it, getting them used to the, the value proposition of the app itself. Like once they've started a subscription, you want to give them a kind of a concierge experience with that subscription within the first week or however long the trial is. You know, you want them during that trial, the goal should be to get them to experience as much value as possible from the premium features, things which they're going to really miss, hopefully, when, uh, when the trial ends, you know, to the point where they're actually going to want to continue to pay for it. Um, so it's, it's really your chance to get them to build habits around consuming the premium content or using the premium features. Uh, we have some great examples here from Headspace and Blinkist, you know, both, um, you know, trying hard to, to get people into using those premium features during the trial. So we finally got people to pay for your subscriptions, but you're gonna have to let them, uh, to, well, they're gonna have to stay a little bit longer so that you can balance your acquisition costs, especially because there are very few people at that moment in the, in the funnel. So if you wanna balance your acquisition costs and start making money, uh, you want them to stay at least for a year, maybe, well, maybe less, maybe more, but the one year retention is a KPI that you'll be looking for. Um, few things to know, of course, there, there's differences in uh, retention between whether you are converting on a yearly plan or monthly plan uh, your subscribers because, well, on a monthly plan, you have 12 times more opportunities to churn. So, of course, you expect people to be churning easier or before. Um, well, for yearly subscription, you can expect, or you, you should target for 40% uh, renewal uh, rate and for the after year. And uh, for the monthly uh, subscription, you can expect, uh, well, you should target 15% uh, uh, of the people that are still uh, inside your funnel a year after. A um, few things to be able to reach these, um, these numbers, and maybe you'll be overpassing them because uh, well, still numbers are, uh, and, and are meant to be, uh, to, be, to be beaten by others, but a few things that uh, we recommend you to do. First, find the right duration. We've talked about that for the trial, but it's also important when you convert your user because let's say I'm 55, I'm younger than that, but let's say I'm 55 learning English uh, for work. Um, well, uh, it's not gonna happen in one month. So maybe you want to drive people from the very start on plans that actually match their needs. And the good thing is that maybe it's gonna be six months and one year, and well, this KPI is gonna be easy to match. But there is another thing is that we have a lot of people subscribing just to see for one month, and they're getting used to it, and they stay in that monthly. How many times have you experienced uh, an app that you subscribe to on a monthly plan that offers you to pass to a yearly plan? It's, even if you're very active, Nobody does it, but it's a good way of upsetting people, and it's a good way of offering a discount that is paid by Apple, because after a year of subscribing, you will be passing from 30% uh, cutoff to a 15% cutoff, so you could offer that cutoff to your users, especially if you upsell them to a yearly plan, so it's an easy way. 
Second thing is that create continuous value. Well, not, everything is not about how you track them and you make them use paywalls, you make them explain what you do on the paywalls, etc. It's also about providing value. It's about products. So provide continuous value and promote it because it's not only, it's in the app, it's, it's in the app and here it is, what it is, what it, we did for you and this is why you want to stay with us. It's because our product is great, product is amazing and we are bringing con consistent and, and continuously value to our product. But then, you know, people will churn for sure. But that's okay. Um, not every breakup is, uh, is tough. Um, and, well, there are two kinds of, of churn. Of course, there's a voluntary churn, so people, you have issues with uh, credit cards, so it happens a lot on monthly and weekly, uh, weekly plans. This is an easy one to beat because if you, you get the information in real time um, uh, from the store, so you can exploit it and well, then use a, um, an automation with your CRM or push notification system and email system so that's okay, we had a problem charging your credit card. Here's a deep link to update your credit card and you'll be able to recover 30, 40% from involuntary change things to a small tactic that you can set up with a well, purchase or whatever <laughs> in, a, in a matter of minutes. And the other one is, uh, well, people will churn for some reasons because they, well, maybe they don't like the product, they don't use it anymore, but for some reasons. And these reasons you need to know, because they're gonna be key to have a better understanding of maybe what's, what's, the, what's wrong with your price, with your package composition, with uh, maybe competitors coming in, etc. that you didn't see. And this is really uh, gold for improving your subscription in your apps. Okay, we've got three and a half minutes left, so I'm gonna speed up just slightly. Uh, yeah, we've got a few more examples to get through. Uh, yeah, so Visco does a really great job, actually, of reducing subscriber churn as well. Um, the, the key point here that I want you to take away is, um, you know, always try to win back your payers. These are super valuable users. If they've paid once, you've got a great chance of getting them to pay again, and definitely try that before you just start trying to acquire new subscribers, right? These are your most valuable users. And secondly, don't jump straight to offering them a discount. You can keep discounts in your back pocket. Discounting is a very useful method of you know, like increasing your conversion rates. But um, you know, what Visco saw was that actually just reminding users, just telling them that their subscription has expired um, and maybe they want to keep using the premium features, you know, they got a 25% uplift on that without offering any discount. So don't go straight to the discount. At least like, try like, without discount first. OK, we can go to the next one. Um, yeah, so with Headspace, um, thinking about like, you know, kind of keeping people engaged throughout their subscription, um, you know, as, as Jeff has said, this is really all down to like having, you know, providing value to the user, ongoing value, um, and having a great product, right? But if you have those things, like Headspace does, then some more kind of like gamification or behavioral psychology um, tactics can be really helpful. They have, you know, regular reminders where they, they ask a user to set goals around their meditation uh, habits at the beginning of their, their onboarding, and then they use these goals to kind of send users reminders. Hey, you said you were going to meditate three times this week. You've only meditated twice. You know, do you want to do the third one? Um, you know, and this really helps to kind of keep people on track and build a re regular habit. Similarly, these ideas of progress and milestones, sort of st standard gamification type stuff, so run streaks, badging, anything where you can kind of like help people to feel a sense of progress and, and celebrate it. Like, you know, hey, you, you got to your, your 10th meditation, well done. Or you've, you've done 50 meditations this year, fantastic, you know? Um, these kind of things really kind of help keep people on track. Also very common, uh, you know, to have these kind of stat summaries in, um, uh, you know, fitness and lifestyle apps. Okay. Um, now, Spotify yearly review is probably my favorite example of like long-term uh, retention tactic that, that's really, you know, really awesome. Like Spotify put a lot of work into this, clearly. Um, and, and people really look forward to their yearly review from Spotify. I'm not sure if you've all, um, if everyone has seen this, but essentially it goes through your entire last year's listening history, calls out, you know, some, some interesting songs which you were, you know, listening to on repeat at a certain time, you know, reminds you of all these songs that maybe you've actually forgotten you were listening to at the beginning of the year. Um, you know, it can be a bit cringeworthy sometimes. You're like, oh shit, was I really listening to that? Or, you know, oh great, this is an amazing song, you know, get super nostalgic about stuff that you, you know, um, that you've been listening to throughout the year. Great example of leveraging stats and data in a really creative way. Uh, people really look forward to receiving these and they also share them, you know, so it's also great for virality um, and great for increasing emotional investment with the product. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, okay, over well, to Jeff. What, what happened next? That you have that great funnel, converse great, all pathing from one step to another, you're in the, with, within the same, the good numbers, and as I said, it's, it's only numbers in the end. It uh, depends on what kind of category, what kind of country you're operating, etc. So you should uh, just 
take that as our only reference, especially because intensity is also really important. It's good to show a paywall to 100% of your users, but how many times? Intensity of display. It's good to convert and start trial, uh, to convert people from trial to paid, but to which kind of plan? Was it an expensive or was it a cheap plan? Was it a yearly or monthly? So work on intensity once like that. And to be able to work on intensity and improve that, what you'll need is to yeah, measure you need to test. measure. You need to measure and test. You need to be like, you know, got the right analytics in there that you're actually able to, you know, understand if you change something, like what, what you know, what's, what's really the, the impact on like longer term LTV, for example. So ch testing things like price, bundling, trial length, all of this stuff, um, as well as looking at like qualitative signals, surveying and talking to users becomes super important. And when, you reach, when you've reached to do that, well, basically you'll be eating a glass ceiling because you have that one-size-fits-all approach and you'll struggle getting some more conversion and well, having better figures. And what, we, what you will start doing is like finding the underperformers, thanks to the measurement uh, and the analytics you've put in place, finding the group of big groups of underperformers that are below the, the average and try to work on these guys. You know? So maybe it can be a specific, like under 18 or 1825 guys, it can be a specific country. And to be able to do that, you need, you'll need to get these groups Try experiments, change the pricing, change the, I don't know, the copywriting, the, the images, and then optimizing one by one with a lot of tests, uh, all these niches so that you can break that glass ceiling. Okay, we're out of time, so let's skip the, the last examples there. If you want to talk more about um, you know, best practice and examples, I, I can share plenty with you during the day. I'm here till 5 p.m. I'd love to meet everybody here who I don't know already and to catch up with the folks that I have met before. Um, and, uh, and Jeff, you, you also have, uh, I think you have a, a booth somewhere or a stand? Yeah, well, we'll be there all day. You can find us with these sweaters, with three of us, and we'll be happy to continue discussions and maybe uh, discuss about the examples we had no time to show you today. But uh, have a great conference, have a great day. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, thanks everyone. <laughs> <laughs>